Welcome to the Gradle for Android video course. This video course is specifically designed to show you how Gradle is used to build Android applications. This is in addition to the basic Gradle functionality. Uh, we're talking about additional features that have been added to make Android applications have all kinds of nice capabilities. For example, and in this course, after doing a quick Ruby review and a quick review of the basics of Gradle, we're going to go ahead and talk about Android. We'll build a very simple Android application and see how Gradle is used to treat that as a multi-project build with assorted dependencies. There's also a plugin for, for Gradle that, it, that allows us to configure Android applications, and we'll be going through the details of that for the rest of the course, basically. We'll see that they have various build types available, where we could build a release build or a debug build. We could set up an automatic signing configuration so that we can digitally sign the output APKs in preparation for uploading them to the Google Play Store. We can define additional build types if we want. And then we'll look at something called flavors. A flavor allows you to build essentially the same app in multiple different ways with slight changes to the look and feel or even some changes to the application itself. And then a combination of a flavor and a build type is known as a variant and we'll look at all the different variants that could come out of this as well. Finally, we'll look at using our own Android library projects as part of a larger Android application so that you could split functionality into reusable components that can be part of other applications as well. All of this will show us how to work with Gradle for Android in all of its glory and give you a good sense of how to work with it on your own Android applications. To get right started though, let's take a look at the actual documentation that comes with Gradle for Android. Now, if you're an Android developer, and if you're not, we're going to review the basics of Android, but let me at least give you an idea here. If you're an Android developer, the place where you start on any documentation is the website developer.android.com. This is the home page for the documentation for Android. Now, they have additional pages specifically associated with this new build system, but let's start here anyway. Now, one of the nicest features of this particular website, I mean, they have all kinds of documentation and talking about tutorials and Android Wear and Android Auto and TV and everything, but if there's one thing Google knows how to do, it's search. And you'll notice over here on the right, there's a magnifying glass. And if I mouse over the magnifying glass, I could type something in the search box. If I type, for example, Gradle, they have a direct link to the Android plugin for Gradle. In this section, they talk partly about why we're doing this in the first place. Why are we using Gradle for Android builds? Now, a little bit of history here might be appropriate. When Android applications were first created, there was no real separate build tool available. At the time, the build for Android was what we like to call now an IDE build. An IDE build means that we would build the application in an IDE rather than having some separate execution process uh, for building the application itself. So what they did is they had a plugin for Eclipse known as ADT, the Android Developer Tools Project. And when you would download their customized Eclipse version with the ADT plugin built in, you would get that automatically, or you could add ADT to an existing Eclipse build. And everything after that was part of the IDE's functionality. This is something that we, in the Java world, kind of got away from in the last 10 to 15 years because then it's difficult to reproduce outside of an IDE. And for example, to try to build something on a CI server becomes particularly difficult. Even test cases expected you to use projects inside of Eclipse. So this was always a bit of awkwardness. Now, at the beginning, they did generate ant build files to go with your Android project. And they are and were available, but remarkably few people actually use them. 
Now, I have to admit, I always felt that the Eclipse Android developer tools were a better Eclipse than Eclipse. They did a remarkably good job with them. It was a very stable platform that had a lot of nice features to it. But ultimately, there was only so far they could go with it. And one of the issues was that you could not build different types of the same application at the same time. I mentioned in the, in the welcome that we're going to talk about these different build types of a debug build and a release build, or maybe have different flavors, a paid flavor and a free flavor, etc. Well, in Eclipse, there was no way to do more than one of those at a time. Very awkward. So ultimately, in 2013, they decided to switch to a real build tool, and that build tool is Gradle, and switch to a different IDE, and that IDE is known as Android Studio. Android Studio is a free version of IntelliJ IDEA, which understands Gradle completely. In fact, rather than having its own functionality inside, or rather than using that for the build, Android Studio, in fact, invokes Gradle build tasks in order to build the application. You can really kind of think of Android Studio as a giant UI on top of Gradle. So it's really in our best interest to understand how Gradle works and how it works inside the IDE. Now in this little documentation page about the Android plugin for Gradle, they talk about the Android plugin for Gradle runs independent of Android Studio as well, so you could build your app from the command line or on apps where Android or machines where Android Studio is not installed, such as CI servers, continuous integration servers. We get these build variants, as I mentioned before, we can easily set dependencies inside there, we can modify the manifest, we can do signing configurations, run the ProGuard tool for modifying our project for compressing and mungifying and everything, we can do testing, etc. We get a lot of conventions that we can follow with sensible defaults to make it easy to build our application. We get both projects and modules, including library modules, which will be sub-projects in a Gradle multi-project build. We see an example build file. Now, this is a very old one, which, by the way, is part of the reason we're having a video course, is that the documentation gets to be a little out of date. So we're going to give you the most up-to-date information we can. And they'll talk about the build files and the types and the dependencies and on and on and on, and even giving a Gradle wrapper to build everything. And we're going to go through as much of this as we can. So the beauty of using Gradle for Android is that it extends our capabilities considerably beyond what was available in the old Eclipse version and in fact allows us to get away from the whole idea of an IDE build in the first place. So there's both pushes driving us in this direction and pulls driving us in this direction. The pushes being getting away from any possible pr dependencies or problems with Eclipse. The pulls giving us all these extra capabilities of doing variants and having a wrapper and running on CI servers and having automated testing built in and so on. And that's going to give us a good chance to uh, work with sophisticated applications that you can deploy easily. So there's your basic motivation for why we're doing this. And now we'll have to start getting into some of the details.